What's going on, everybody? Savage here. In today's gameplay, we're going to be diving into some random quads gameplay and going over the mistakes that these players are making in Warzone. Most of you guys are struggling with Warzone, not because of your skill level, but just because you're making these simple, basic mistakes over and over and over again, and you're not learning from them. We can watch players who are ranked 500, 600, 700, or even diamond players or platinum players, whatever players, and no matter how good they are, they're struggling getting wins, they're struggling getting kills, just because of the simple fact that they're making the same basic mistakes. So what the series does is it will enlighten you guys on simple basic mistakes. That way you guys can learn from that and just kind of jump into a game and start improving, start getting better, start getting more wins, start getting more kills, and the list goes on. But if you do enjoy the content, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel today, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat, we're, we're diving into action. We have Evergreen in a situation where they're fighting one player. Now, I'm not sure exactly what was happening in the beginning of that fight, but it looked like one player may have taken out the entire squad. I know it definitely, I know that he definitely took out two of the players. Now, what you saw right there was the fact that the guy we were just spectating was way too busy hiding in the stalls. The dude's wiping his ass. Stop. If your teammate's in combat, go help him. If you guys continue to play this game like you're scared, you will never improve. And then eventually this game will become stale for you. You'll get tired of it and you'll move on to something different. But that play style will also affect your gaming until you end up working yourself out of these bad habits. Uh, but here we are spectating blunts. I'm not going to be using streamer mode today. It's a little late for that. Um, but here we are trying to figure out where to go. Now we have two teammates. We have one in the gulag, one that is dead. Um, supply run definitely would be my thing. I really wouldn't recommend going here for supply run. Um, just because of the area that it's at, I definitely expect there to be a team and we might have a very short lived life. But let's see what happens. Also him, he should definitely be floating high up, maintaining his elevation, waiting for his teammates to land on it that way. He can cut his cord and drop on whatever buy station it directs him to. Hopefully something within our range. All right, so Blunts lands, picks it up, and here we go. Now, this is a perfect, this is the perfect strategy. Unfortunately for him, there's a recon objective activated right next to where he needs to go to. So, yeah, this is, uh, he's going to have to wait. He's going to have to wait. So, I like the fact that he's going to be landing on top of the radar. Now, this is not preferred, right? Nobody wants to sit here. Oh, no. Yeah, you messed up on that one. Nobody wants to sit here and camp, but you got to make the smarter play. Um, and the smart play is not to go there because you'll end up dying. You may get your teammate back. Cool. But at what cost? I don't think buying a teammate back and sacrificing yourself is going to do anyone any favors at all. Just kind of wait here patiently for them to get their load out and get the hell out. And then we can end up going there. Now, if you're a sweat, if you're trying to get aggressive, which I love to see, dive down there and try to screw them over. But... Oh, we got a C58 versus possibly an entire squad with a loadout. So this this could end very badly. And here we are dropping. A little 360 no scope. My man's trying out for phase. I love it. All right, music man coming back and we're off. Now you just made a lot of noise. We need to get the hell out of here. I don't like the fact that he came down here to loot because again, if that squad's nearby, which they probably will, they would have heard us brought our teammate back and they would probably be on their way to come or come fight us. So in a situation like that, guys, buy your teammate back and run away. Get out of this area because now all we've done is put ourselves in a corner, allowing the enemy team to possibly kill us. Fortunately, Blunts comes through the vehicle. He's able to go ahead and get a nice little splat. Pick up his guns real quick. Here we are analyzing everything. We're going to stick with the PPSH and the MAC-10. Um, this right here, you can see the way his brain's operating, his indecisiveness, the fact that he reacts before he thinks. He literally saw the loot instead of picking it up. His mind was everywhere. It was boggled. He was a little confused, a little hesitant, a little scared. He ends up jumping down. It may not seem like a big deal to you guys, but as you're doing this throughout one match, let's say the match is 20 minutes long and you do this for the loadout, you do this for fights, you do this for rotations, that shit adds up and you have a lot of wasted time that ends up affecting your entire gameplay. Time management is crucial. I'm a huge believer in that. I preach that shit on a daily. You guys need to make a decision and go with the flow. Don't just go on autopilot and end up having to backtrack because that little bit of time he was backtracking, the guy we just killed, his team could have come pushed us and we'd be in a very unfortunate state. Vehicle coming up behind us right now. Green has no idea. Oh, there he's flipping around finally. Just shoot him out, baby. Come on, man. Enemy jumps out of the vehicle in the worst possible spot. He looked like he was actually making it out and decided to just go ahead and 
bail out of the vehicle. Not really sure um, what playmaker was thinking. That was not the play to be making. That's a fact. She just drove off. Now, notice that when our dude was using the M13, he ADS on the enemy and his his accuracy went crazy, right? It just looked like he had way too much sensitivity. And it's because he does. His ADS sensitivity needs to be adjusted for him. Now, before anybody asks what a good sensitivity is, it just depends on what you're using. There is no one hit wonder. I cannot tell you guys to adjust it to this or that and have it work for you guys. It depends on the type of controller you're using. If you're on mouse and keyboard, how big your fingers are, what your reaction time is. If you have stick lifters, tall sticks, small sticks, and the list goes on. So practice, find what works for you. And, and then and then use it um but user coming in with the melee cali sticks just sitting in the corner blue unfortunately oh well, we're gonna heartbeat that my dude is that is that the, you know where he's at okay so one heartbeat scan didn't wasn't enough we went ahead and did two all right we got smoke grenades out cali sticks brother you're gonna end up in a really unfortunate spot so it looks like the enemy just kind of got a kill. He's camping here, got a kill, and he moved on out. Now, this is a smart play for this guy. If you're camping, you definitely want to relocate. Anything, anything you're doing, you want to relocate. And whether you're camping, whether you're playing aggressive, you never want to stay in the same spot because this happens. You end up getting a Cali stick kill, camping in a corner. The, of course, the rest of the team's going to come. Stop heart beating, my guy. Of course, the rest of the team's going to come converge in that area. He was very smart getting out that building and moving somewhere else. Not to mention the amount of time they are wasting being distracted with this one building. The enemy's long gone, or he just went ahead, relocated to another building, and he's going to wait patiently to get another kill. Now, this guy clearly has ghost on. So the whole technique of heart beating right now, you could throw that out the window. Again, waste the time. It's slowing your movement speed down. You need to keep your eyes visualizing the entire map and not on the heartbeat sensor. Again, the Heartbeat Sensor is a great tool, but it's a tool to use, not a tool to learn. Okay, buying back Evergreen. Poor Evergreen, dude. He can't stay on the map for more than five seconds before he gets messed up by somebody. All right, this is this is the position right here. Decide what you want to do. Do you want to keep looking for this one riot shield guy with Cali sticks, or do you want to go ahead and move on out? We need to be looking at the map, figuring out where we're going to rotate to, trying to see if we can find tracers, track them down. We saw tracers coming from Salt Mine. We could go over there. Um, we could go over to airport. We can go over to hangars and go anywhere we want But there ain't no reason for us to be doing this right now Of course blue should be landing on his stuff to grab his loadout and we should be long gone But as you guys can see no game plan is happening. We're just kind of waiting for enemies to come to us Guys make a decision to go for it start thinking every time you're playing warzone ask yourself Where do I think they're gonna be enemies at and go there go there man? Or if you don't want to get kills, where's the best spot? where the circle stands right now and go there we've literally been just passing shit off doing this doing that here comes a birth of mach 5 from the west and we're all gonna hide in the same spot and get triple planted oh my god <laughs> you, guys you can't make this shit up you, you just you physically cannot make this shit wait what whoa we had a whole other teammate left these are the guys you want me to spectate Oh, we got screwed, boys. Thanks, Activision. Oh, no. Oh, I want to know what happened to the last guy. My curiosity's peaked right now, and I'm fucking pissed. All right, here we have uh, Frandas, who is just... Not sure what he's doing, to be honest. He's rocking uh, a close-range weapon, okay, an SMG with a scope on it. And he's looking at the rooftops. We see traces come from the building. Now, look, this is a position that I never really understand either. I'm all for playing rooftops if you're gatekeeping an area or if it's in game and it's just the best position to be in. But this early in the game, there's no reason to be shooting from rooftop to rooftop because nothing's going to happen, especially in quads. If it's solo, it's a different story. But do a trio's quads. Guess what? When you knock them, they're going to get rezzed. So players that play rooftops the entire game end up laying prone right there or end up rocking, you know, SMGs and like, like look, look at the quick snaps for nothing, right? For nothing. It's all show. No skill, unfortunately. But players that do this, these are the guys that struggle getting five plus kills. And I'm not hating. I'm just using tough love to try to teach you guys to break out of these bad habits. This is not the way you guys want to play. We're not helping ourselves at all. We're not. I mean, the only thing you're really helping is your sniping ability. But again, what happens when we knock them? They're just going to get rezzed. They're just going to get rezzed. And here we are watching a loadout drop with our entire body vulnerable to get sniped. Your teammates are literally sniping teams on top of these rooftops and you're just sitting on the ledge waiting for someone to screw you over. This is not the way to play.
Again, this is just fear. They don't want to go on the ground level because they're afraid they're going to die, but it's okay to die. It's a video game. Go out there, fight a team, say GG's if you lose, and start up the next match. This right here, nobody is having fun. They're not having fun. I'm not having fun. Y'all aren't having fun. This is just... Oh, shit. Yo, your boy gets knocked and executed because he's crawling in the middle of the open. Why? Wait, what? Okay, our entire body right now is revealed to the building to the left-hand side, but we're just laying prone. I'm not really sure exactly what Fran Dance's play is. He's just kind of running back and forth. He's, he's supplying zero support to anything. The most we've seen him do is drop money. Now, we do have a teammate who's down. Um, I would already go ahead and start rotating to that area. I like the fact that Fran Dance is doing that. Just to, just to get the hell off the rooftop. It's clearly not the play. It's clearly not for us. Let's move on and go somewhere else. Now, let's buy, utilize this. There's a player right there, ground level, the 105. Hanzo going in. Let's see if we can spectate Hanzo real quick. We do. He goes ahead, drop shot. Some enemy bleeds out. And we are good to go. Also, very unfortunate that vince literally has to sit in the gulag waiting his turn meanwhile the fire sale is just wasting its time away uh activision should definitely give players the option to where if we're in the gulag we can just kill ourselves off so that our teammates can get us back because you know worst case scenario you end up waiting to do your gulag and you end up losing and fire sales run out that's just an unfortunate position for any team to be in now here we are here we have hanzo walking around with a precision scope in his hand and back to another rooftop. I mean, look at this. We used an advanced UAV, which I love, but it did nothing for us. It, oh, granted, when these guys rotate, it'll be a nice spot, but still, I would definitely be rather going on foot and get out of this downtown area. Enemies using the cluster to suppress us. They did it at the wrong time, though. If you guys, you guys are in the position of this team here, and you're going to need to move to safety, crossing this open ravine, guess what you need to do? Use the precision when you're crossing the ravine. You got to suppress the enemy. Suppressing the enemy allows you to move. Don't just shoot it at them randomly for no reason. Because now that they've wasted their cluster, guess what? They have nothing to suppress the enemies when they have to walk across. So we could have an easy team wipe. And these guys love the precisions, don't they? So again, another mistake, guys, if you're going to call a UAV in, if you're going to call it advanced UAV in, you better move. If you guys want to camp, don't use UAVs. They're useless for you guys. If you guys are campers, stop wasting your money in UAVs. Just, just buy precision clusters, whatever the hell you want. And again, going back to this, we had these guys right over here that were launching strikes at us. We even have a marker on hospital. So the team is aware that the team at hospital needs to move across. They don't have to do it now. They should. And because they should, I'd be looking that direction. But nobody is. Not a single player is looking towards a great gatekeeping position, not to mention this area here. People are gonna be rotating out of factory and an airfield and apartments, and no one's there to watch them come off FU Mountain. No one, no one at all. Look, look at this. That way, that way, this guy's laying prone. Let's spectate him. Yeah, this is, this is our life right here. No, no. Again, there's nothing wrong with playing rooftops, but there, there is a strategy to it. Just because someone's on a roof doesn't mean they're actually a camper. It's how they play the rooftop that makes them a camper. All right, he flew off. I definitely would probably jump up on the ledge, try to get that angle. You don't want to sit up here for too long though, right? Just kind of jump up, peek real quick, see where the enemy's at, see if you can detect movement. I like the fact that he wasn't in the scope just now. Unfortunately, whiffing his shots. Loading our loading your gun while you're in your scope also a bad move. Not not smart at all. When you guys are reloading, you're vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, you need to see more of the map. Increase your field of view. You guys can't bitch about console not having FOV sliders if you're always in your scope. Now I agree, console does need FOV sliders. But again, you can't bitch about it if you're always in your scope because all you're gonna be doing is taking that 100 120 FOV and cutting it down to 80 anyway. And you know, it kind of irritates me seeing players play like this, not because it's boring to watch, it's just because the fact that these guys could probably be better players if they actually took the time to get out there, fight enemies, get better, and improve. 
I, I mean, it's amazing what practice can do for you guys. There's a reason why, you know, people in sports, professional sports, peewee sports, whatever the case is, there's a reason why the more they practice, the better they become. If you guys are just sitting on the rooftops, you're not practicing your movement. You're not practicing your observation. You're not practicing rotations. You're not practicing snapping from one target to another. You're not practicing drop shot. You're not practicing B hop. You're not practicing shit. The only thing I will say is you're practicing your sniper shots, leading a target at range, things like that. But that's not enough benefit to convince yourself to sit on a rooftop 24 damn seven. Ain't no way. Let's move on to somebody else doing the exact same thing, doing the exact same thing. And now Joaz or Jaws, whatever, his, however you pronounce his name, this is what he's done in all three buildings that we spectated him. He's laid him prone outside watching the doorway. He was watching another elevator shaft in the other building. And now here he is doing the exact same thing with a heartbeat sensor. Not the play. Not the play. Now, again, not hating. I'm being I'm being aggressive, but I'm not trying to bully. But now he's reading the note. I don't blame them there. What's it say? Um, but players like this, there's a reason why they struggle getting more than two kills you guys see it right here because they're not worried about improving they're so afraid of dying that they don't want to get out there they don't want to get better they don't want to get kills they don't want to get the win they don't want they think they want to get the win they think they want to get kills you ain't gonna get shit doing this you're not you might catch somebody making making a mistake coming up the elevator shaft but when they hear your friends on top of the roof guess what they're gonna be coming up the staircase not the elevator shaft at least they shouldn't they're bad players and they hear you guys shooting they may, come, come, they may come up the elevator shaft, but most of us, we're coming up the staircase. And we're coming fast. And again, guys, like, trust me, I'm a sniper main. And even, even being a great sniper, you rob yourself of a lot of kills. There's a reason why I stopped sniping here recently. And it's because I'm tired of getting downs and getting like 7,000, 8,000 damage and only a handful of kills. There is a kind of annoyance with being a sniper. So guys, if again, if you want to get more kills, you don't have to put the sniper away. You can have it. But rock a secondary and start playing aggressive. Start killing some bitches. All right, circle is going to be favoring downtown. And we do have a high enough roof to be able to jump onto a rooftop. Now, this isn't a bad spot to be in, right? Talk all the shit you want about camping on rooftops. And I agree. I hate it. Um, but we actually ended up working ourselves into a decent position so we can actually play the rooftops of the in circles. Well, not anymore. Oh, and back up we go. So we've now wasted a sun grenade. We've wasted a selfie just to go back to where we were just at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't like the play of him jumping off the rooftop anyway and going here because again, you want to maintain the elevation so you can float this way. If he was to land up here, he wouldn't be able to float at all. Blue's going down, trying to pop the self res. No pings going out to where the enemies are at, unfortunately. All right, circle has forced that building out. We can go ahead and give up that dream. Now, again, this is the spot you want to be, and I'm glad that they marked it. At least Fran Ants, Fran Ass knows a little bit about positioning. Then again, that's not really that's not really rocket science. Now, use that precision right now. Use the precision. Yeah, to force him off the rooftop. He didn't, he didn't, did he use it? He's still in his inventory. Oh, his teammate did. Don't miss it, bro. Oh my God. He's so busy. Trying to look like a badass. You, you missed your shot. Now here we are, forced ourselves on ground level. We do get the kill, but again, where's this team at? We're gonna go in for the execute. Bust into the door, change position, get out of there. We do need to pop the reload and plates as we're moving. Oh, we have no plates, rip. There we go, we got one. <laughs> get your teammate to drop you some plates as well. Another reason why communications needs to be on point. Good shit on Frandas. Dropping the plates. Now, did anybody get on the rooftop? We have one player up here. Vince is the only guy to actually get up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in a 4v4v4 situation. Now that we're in this spot, where do we go? Police station is going to be the vantage point. Unfortunately, we're going to have to work ourselves in a bad area. And we need to get some picks, though. We see their teammates caught out in the open. If you're this guy, if you're the guy shooting at us right now, he needs to be falling back to police station and playing that building because that is the best spot to be. He's a very easy pick, but unfortunately, Jos is completely uncertain of his own skill level. So he's going to bail away instead of getting that easy pick. 
and watch watch why it's so important if these guys actually group up and they play this building it's going to be very very hard for us to even rotate there's two enemies in front of us to our left hand side jows literally saw them is not taking any shots there we go with one down there's one more play that we saw we're getting shot right there from the 159 go ahead and pop up and get the shots off we need some help from our teammates too hanzo is in the gas we have the advantage now. It could be a 4v3v1 or a 4v2v2, but regardless, we outnumber everyone in the squad. We got shots coming from behind us right now. Guy playing the edge of the wall. Great job of trying to use the truck to go around. We do get the crack. We get the knock. We need to start plating up right now, though, brother. There you go. Plate up, plate up, plate up, plate up. Now we have a 4v3 situation. There you are playing the police station. Let's see how they play this. Because of the windows and the rooftop, it's going to be hard for us to rotate to this area, but we need to get it done. We need to do it fast. We notice that there's one player sitting in this back area right here. So that means there's only two guys in police station. This should be an easy building for us to push. The longer we wait, the harder it's going to be for us because the enemies will have time to rotate to that side of the building. They'll have time to uh, and fight us because we're going to have the gas to our backs. So we'll be fighting the enemy and the gas. I would already have pushed to the building, if not inside the building, and closed the gap. Stun's going in. I like the fact that while the teammates... Are distracted while the enemies are distracted when they go in from behind they're on the rooftop right now oh no, there they are oh my god your sensitivity is crazy high his ads in city needs to be turned down a lot and i need to watch out for that hallway dude he might drop down and shoot you in the back when you have one plate popped tracker to the left hand side he didn't see it unfortunately i don't know what we're shooting at right now there he is again we're able to get the kill hanzo somehow able to snap on him with a million sensitivity and get the shots off gg now look guys a lot of y'all struggle with warzone just because of simple basic mistakes and that's why we have a lot of these basic videos is because you can learn how to get a little bit better playing aggressive watching aggressive gameplay and watching high octane gameplay but a lot of you guys y'all get out there y'all try to do this shit that you see other people doing and you end up failing and you're asking yourself why well usually the answer is going to be because you're making simple mistakes keep your observation high start navigating the map get out of your bad habits if you guys have been playing rooftops for a year and you have less than 100 wins and you got a shit ton of hours in the game change it up if you guys have been pushing everything by yourself and not really working as a team and it hasn't worked out for you change it up and of course the list goes on but guys i really hope you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed it make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel today but until next time guys you have a good one and good luck in warzone